In this video, I want to look at an Android app that generates a dynamic grid of buttons and gives those buttons a click event, and then sort of remembers the sort of two of the buttons that are, are clicked. And this is sort of toward a game of uh, memory or concentration where you have uh, sort of something like letters or something associated with them with all with each button and then when you turn two over if they match then you sort of get a point or something like that so we're not going to do all that game logic but we're going to do keep track of like here was the first button pressed here was the second button pressed the code for this can be found at the url seen here so here is the app when we start you see just a text view and a button and there is, though you don't see it, a, a linear layout that is a vertical linear layout. And then when I hit this button, it generates these other buttons. Uh, I think it's 10 rows and four columns. Yes, there it is, 10 rows and four columns. And then they are given a click event. We click on the first one. Uh, it knows that it was the first one. And then there was a little toast down here saying that it was a uh, row three, column two. And then when I hit a second button, it knows that it was row, row five, column three. And then after some time, they are sort of turned back over. So, so again, setting up for some kind of game to see like, Oh, if they were a match, then leave them revealing, otherwise turn them back, but give them the, have some amount of time for the user to see uh, what was behind each behind. Okay. So here we go. Again, the activity layout was a text view, a button, and a linear layout with a vertical orientation. So the overall layout is a constraint layout. And so these items that are the children of the constraint layout must then be constrained and have a sort of a horizontal and vertical constraint. Then all of the dynamic stuff we are going to put in the linear layout. And the things in the linear layout with a vertical orientation are going to be organized uh, just one under the other. And uh, we won't have to worry about uh, constraining them or positioning them. They'll just be one under the other. And what we're going to put in the vertical linear layout that already exists, we're going to put horizontal layouts. And so each horizontal layout will be one under the other. Those will be the rows. And then within each horizontal linear layout, which are dynamic, we are going to put the buttons and they will be arranged and that will be a horizontal. Those dynamic linear layouts will be horizontal. And so the buttons will be organized horizontally. And that will save us the problem of constraining things and positioning things and, and all that trouble. So that's the sort of nice thing that the linear layouts will give us. Okay. So here goes the code. Uh, not much in the imports. There's a countdown timer, which we'll see button linear layout. There was a toast. Um, we saw the toast when I click a button. There's a toast down here telling me just the wrong column. Um, when I was previously running this uh, program, I wasn't seeing the toasts. And, uh, and but there wasn't a problem with the code, but there was a problem with the emulator. And so in a situation like that, you can go to tools, ABD manager, come over here and wipe the data, sort of like, you know, almost like starting with a new phone and sort of downloading the software. So it's sort of like getting a new phone, uninstalling, installing the software again, and what have you. Okay. So the, uh, click event for the buttons is going to, I'm going to put that outside of onCreate. So here's the end of onCreate and here's the button listener. And so things that I want to have access to uh, in the button click and even in one button click versus the next button click, um, I'm putting in 
uh, I'm declaring at the sort of class or global level so that they can be remembered. So again, so I have a click event that's outside of on create. So I'm putting it outside of on create and I want it to be remembered sort of from click to click. So I want to, and I'm, I was keeping track of the first button, the second button. I'm not sure I need the second button because all the action of the second button is within the click event of the second button. So I could probably get away without this one, but I do need this one. I do need to remember the button to, to sort of turn it back over. Um, it might be good enough to remember some index and figure out which button it is, but instead I just remember the button. And I'm also remembering, uh, the, the, I'm counting the clicks of, of the buttons and, uh, and I'll be interested in whether that's an odd number or an even number. So again, that's also uh, this sort of class level variable uh, so that I can remember it from click to click. So in on create, I'm connecting to the interface. So here's my connection to the button. Here's my connection to the uh, vertical linear layout. And I've decided in this case, I'm gonna have 10 rows and four columns. And then I had this uh, button that makes the grid. So I uh, disabled it. I just sort of put that in just sort of minutes ago. So uh, um, I'm not sure it's in what I posted, but uh, it is a thing that you only want to sort of click once and then play the game. And then when maybe the game's over, we enable a button if they, they want to play again, but you don't want to keep making grids. So it is a reasonable to uh, disable it. So I'm looping over the rows in this first for loop and I'm making a new linear layout, giving it a horizontal orientation and then uh, adding it to the vertical linear layout. And then I'm starting another loop with a different counter J and going through one to the number of columns, which was four, and I'm adding a new button. I'm setting its text to sort of a space and I'm giving it a tag, which is just the, the I and the J, the, the, the sort of the row and the column. I'm adding the button to the linear layout I had just made and I'm giving it a click event. So there's the end of my J inner loop. There's the end of my I outer loop. There's the end of my button click and there's the end of all create. Now I'm down to my, when I make these new generated buttons, when I click on them, here was my uh, toast. So just showing the tag, which was the, the I of the J. So not having any purpose, but uh, just to sort of show, show that I know which button was pressed in essence. Here I am, uh, just maybe an, an alternative of, of remembering the buttons of, since I know the I and the J, I can sort of maybe recover the button. Um, here I'm incrementing my click counter. And here I'm asking the question if the click counter is odd or even. So I'm doing a dividing by two and taking the modulus, taking the what's the remainder, and asking if it's one, then it's that's an odd click, odd numbered click. And uh, the click event listener has, uh, I didn't explicitly name it, so it gets sort of automatically named as it, and but it is a view. So the argument of this, uh, the method is uh, is a view, and but I happen to know that it's a button, so I'm casting as a button and uh, assigning it to first button which I had declared, if you recall, way up at the top with a late init. So I'm saying I'm gonna have a button, but I don't know which button it is. Now I know which button it is. So I cast it as a button and make the first button. I set the first button's text to the word first, as you were seeing when I was clicking on it. And then the is enabled as false. I cannot click on that. At this time, I cannot click on that again. So it can't be both my first and my second button. If I click again, then I'm again toasting and incrementing my counter. And now my counter will be even and I'll jump to the else. 
and that's going to be start a timer. So I repeat my code above. I take it, cast as a button, make it my second button, set, make the text second, and disable the button for now. So to now I can. So this is a flaw in the, in the logic so far. If I were playing the game, I can while while this timer is going on, I can click uh, other buttons. And I shouldn't be able to, I should sort of disable all the buttons and then re-enable the right buttons uh, later on. But for now, I'm just uh, assuming that the person is not going to, in this timer, in this time, click on another button. So, so it's, there's still logic to be done. The game logic of was there a match or not and which ones to turn over and turn back. And I'm not doing the full game of just making the grid, showing you the timer, showing you how to remember the buttons. And, and that's all I'll do. Okay, so after you click the second button, if you click the second button, you're in the else. You, we established what the second button was, changed its text, disabled it, and then I'm starting a timer. I'm using a countdown timer. The countdown timer has sort of so, know, two timers in one. There's a repeating part of the timer. And then another time sort of the so for how long this timer exists. And I'm not really using the repeating timer. So here's there's an on tick event and I'm not doing anything with that. So I could probably uh, increase this time. So I'm not, I don't need to be calling this function that doesn't do anything uh, this often. Um, but here is after 2000 milliseconds or after two seconds, then I'm going to finish with this timer and I'm setting the text of the first button uh, to blank and enabling that button and the same thing for the second button. And uh, so again, I don't think I need necessarily need the second button because I just remembered it here and here's my last time I'm using it. So they, I could be working with, instead of the second button, I could, just could be working with it here and that, that would work. But I do need, did need to remember the first button. And then timers don't do anything if you don't start them. So here's me starting the timer. That's the end of the uh, else. Um, so here was the end of the timer. Then that was the end of the timer definition. Here was the start of the timer itself. That was the end of the else. This is, should be the end of the click. And then this is the end of the overall main activity class. So that's what I wanted to show you here. Thanks very much for your attention.